since this episode is all about transforming your digestion, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about how when I lost over 100 pounds and transformed my digestion, my mood entirely changed. This is because of what's called the gut-brain connection and how our microbiome directly affects our serotonin production as well as other hormones in the body. On top of that, our microbiome also impacts our immune system and many other functions in the body as well. If food is fuel, we need good fuel to power our brain, and we need good bacteria in our system to support those things and to digest our food efficiently. Now I have tried so many digestive enzymes and probiotics on the market, but the ones that have been by far the most effective are from a company called Bioptimizers. Now they just released their brand new brain enhancing probiotic blend called Cognibiotics, which contains scientifically researched probiotic strains that have been shown to help our mood, cognitive function, and immune system. On top of that, they also included a blend of Chinese herbs in the mix to further enhance the effects. So check out the link in the description for a discount on Cognibiotics and to learn more about how you can naturally optimize your gut health, mood, and immune system. All right, so today my guest is Robin Jardine. Now, Robin Jardine is someone who I would consider uh, an intuitive coach from my perspective. Uh, she does all sorts of things. You know, she uh, does energy work and she works a lot with crystals and hosts a lot of different seminars and workshops. But today we're actually going to talk about Robin's journey in healing her digestive system and uh, problems she had and, and everything that went around with it and the different connections that went along with it as well. So Robin, welcome to the show. And uh, yeah, so I guess we could start off just by saying like, where were you before in the past? And, and uh, start with that, then we could get into like how you transformed your, your digestive system and of course everything that went along with that. Perfect. So I'd say my digestive issues started around the age of four. <laughs> And I'm, I just turned 34 yesterday, so that's Happy birthday. <laughs> that was 30 years ago in one day, not to be exact, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually went to a healer here in Moncton and she was able to help me identify with that, the reason why I have struggled with digestive issues for such a long time is because when my parents actually separated around that age when they started to develop like a lot of emotional problems being an empath I was kind of picking that energy up and absorbing it into my stomach that I was taking on their problems and carrying it in my own stomach and started to feel all those kind of negative feelings and as a result uh, you know I was really sensitive to a lot of food and just kind of was very intuitive towards like not drinking milk not eating milk, didn't really like meat, like was really picky with food. Oh, isn't that interesting how, well, number one, how we are physically, genetically affected by our parents and also energetically affected by our parents and our ancestors. And and just to uh, kind of relate to what you were saying about how you intuitively felt like you shouldn't drink milk, uh, I have a close friend of mine who, when he was a child, he, he didn't want milk at all, but his mother would essentially... Uh, really encourage him to drink milk and I don't want to say force but maybe she did and and uh, you know because I guess back then they were like oh it's the healthiest thing drink milk drink milk but he actually threw up all the time and he was got so sick from it so it's interesting how you experienced the same thing right so I feel really grateful actually that my, my like my parents were just like oh she just doesn't like milk but not really relating it to the, the fact that there's milk in all kinds of products that I was eating. So I was such a picky child that I would, everybody would eat like Subway and I would, I wouldn't like Subway or, you know, I wouldn't like mayonnaise. I didn't like butter. I didn't like um, salad dressings. You know, I didn't like a lot of sauces and, and just like anything with additives too. So yeah, I just, and then I was just seen as kind of a picky child. Yeah, she doesn't like milk, but now, oh great, now she doesn't like all of these other things. So absolutely, I was forced to eat things that I didn't want to eat. And that made me feel even worse. So it's like I piled all that food up in my stomach. And then I started not being able to go to the washroom as well at like a young, young age. Like I just kind of didn't have like a normal digestive system. <laughs> 
yeah, it just started to pile up as I guess you're eating foods that weren't agreeing with your body. And so you would probably agree that, you know, as a child, you intuitively felt like you, you shouldn't eat certain things. I I know my son, I actually think back to that these days, you know, there's certain things that he doesn't like, like uh, eggs, for example. Uh, And I don't force him to eat eggs because I, I know through my own knowledge of nutrition and health that, uh, eggs are, I don't want to say common, but it's not uncommon for people to be, have an allergy or sensitivity to eggs. So I don't, I don't push that upon him because there's probably a reason why he doesn't like it. You know, his, his, uh, body is telling him like, no, like I, that's not good for me. I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> right. And I also struggled, I guess, as time went on, not just, you know, at a young age, but I also struggled probably closer to you know, like puberty and stuff like that, when you start going through all these hormones, like hormonal changes, right? And your body starts to kind of, you know, go through, I guess, yeah, how how you were growing, right? And becoming a female or, or a male. But for me, it was like, I was just not coping with the changes in my body very well. So, you know, I was being told, oh, you know, you're gaining weight. So I would kind of rebel towards somebody like my family member commenting, oh, you know, you're kind of packing on the pounds. And so instead of me kind of taking that in a positive, like, you know, as a comment to make a change, I would kind of go and eat like more. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, sort of uh, a resistance. (laughs) Yeah, because I was I wasn't looking at someone seeing like, oh, you're actually emotionally going through something. I I was seeing it as being, I guess, attacked, like because I was already hurting inside, right? Like not feeling heard. So for me, I learned a lot about communication and that you have to actually verbalize, no, I don't like this, or no, I don't like, you know, like what we're having for supper or whatever it is. I just kind of, kind of instead of verbalizing I think I kind of started to go inward which made it worse yeah it's such a common thing for us to emotionally eat I mean I think it's almost safe to say that everybody does it in some way shape or form I I certainly did and I even still catch myself emotionally eating I mean if you're in a bad mood uh, anything that triggers a dopamine response like sugar or high starch foods or high fat salty foods um, you know, you're going to be, you're going to go towards that to, to try to feel better. But unfortunately that's not the, uh, the solution. That's not the long-term solution anyway. Right. So of course, and I ended up, that's like through your, your years of, you know, wanting guys to like you and, you know, like you're growing breasts and things like that. <laughs> So you're, you know, going through all these changes as it is. And then maybe if you're not feeling the support by like your parents in terms of like the food choices, because usually your parents are the ones kind of choosing your foods, right? If you're not communicating yeah. with you want, and then you're, you start to worry about body image too, because, you know, you see other girls that are, you know, looking different than you are and things like that. So it's definitely about not just body image, but for me, it was about body awareness and yeah. how I was looking at myself too. Now, yeah. did your parents, did, did they eat healthy or did they just eat things that didn't agree with you? So I grew up with one parent, actually I'm saying parents, but I grew up with one parent and she was very healthy and very Canada's food guide and extremely old school meat and potatoes would use the microwave um really not into like natural nutrition or anything like that like so if there were preservatives and something like you know it when she grew up there weren't really preservatives in things so like it was different from from my age groups, I felt like a lot of the products that I was eating, even at a younger age, they started putting a lot of things in foods that weren't like a lot of fillers. Yeah. So I was only, you know, reacting to uh, dairy, but I was also very reactive to gluten and additives that were put into my food as well. So my mom ate healthy and she provided us with 
um, healthy foods. But what ended up happening was we were, we didn't have a lot of money. So we bought a lot of products like crackers and, you know, things that, you know, weren't natural. So that's yeah. when I started to create even more conflict. Uh, that's such a common thing where, you know, we're essentially forced in a society where you don't have a lot of money to just buy things like that are just pure wheat and sugar and, and processed. And, and uh, it doesn't really agree with a lot of people. I mean, I actually read a book recently called Sapiens and he talks about the agricultural revolution and uh, it's more so the ag agricultural quote unquote revolution. Cause it, in a lot of ways it set us more behind than ahead because as soon as that happened, um, we started mass producing wheat, our health declined. And uh, that's because our, our bodies, um, you know, we, we weren't evolved to consume as much wheat as we do. Now we can handle it if we prepare it properly and consume it in moderation, such as like, uh, by prepare it properly, I mean soaking and sprouting and fermenting and so on. But of course, in this day and age, it's, it's so we're living on the, the convenience and the rush of things. So we've developed ways of doing things faster but in fact convenience is more of an inconvenience for us yeah. and uh i can relate with a lot of what you're saying because i mean um i guess my mom was the, s s similar to your mom as well and uh you know it's just the it's just the way we grow up and it didn't react with my body now i personally i wonder if i was born with digestive problems or if i developed them through uh, just the years of poor eating. Uh, and of course I can relate in your sense too, like where it sounds like it's a combination of uh, things that it didn't agree with you on top of the, you know, the emotional eating and all the life's challenges of, of growing up. W would you, would you say that was the same with you? Yeah, I know. I think it's, it's absolutely both because I, I don't think we grew up in an age group. I mean, we're a different age, but and people that are going to be listening are, you know, going to relate probably too that we didn't grow up so much in, in environments where we were taught to talk about how we felt, you know, and to cope with the emotions and things like that. So I think we definitely focused more on, you know, putting things into our body instead of taking things out of our body, like going through cleanses and detoxing and stuff like that so it's just like I just feel like we it that wasn't um our probably our parents generation of like oh I'm gonna go through a cleanse <laughs> or a yeah. detox. I think some people are were, think that that's crazy right whereas now we're learning that we have to go through or some religions believe in fasting and things like that but we're only just evolving now where we're opening up more to learning about like the keto diet or, you know, things where people are realizing, Oh, you know, if I take this stuff out of my body, I'm actually going to be sick for a little while. Right. Yeah, exactly. Cause you're, you're detoxing and, you know, just to add to that, we're in the age of consumerism where we're doing too much consuming, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but there has to be a balance of things we have to consume and we have to produce. And, uh, you know, you could even say that we have to produce more than we actually consume. Just as like, if you're trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle, rule of thumb is, you know, burn more calories than you consume. So, which can be translated to producing more than you consume, whether it's consuming information and you need to produce creatively or consuming food and you need to use that energy for fuel and to go out and maybe just do not even exercise per, per se, but just like fun activities with your friends, like outside. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I was really fortunate because even though I ended up um, with these problems, like thankfully I had a mother that was feeding us with healthy food and we played a lot of sports and we were very, very active. So that's why I knew I had a problem because we were always eating healthy and I was always exercising and everybody was just living a normal life and I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean, if you're consuming things that, that aren't, reacting with your body that's going to cause inflammation and your systems are going to slow down your metabolism is going to slow down i mean if, if you think of your cells um as being inflamed you know they're not going to be working as well so neither is every uh system in your body and that's essentially what what happens a lot it happened with me as well as so like i can uh i can totally relate were you diagnosed with anything specifically or so what ended up happening was i was so sick 
by the time I was 25 that I really felt like I couldn't live anymore. <laughs> and it sounds really dramatic, but that's how I felt because I didn't have the energy to go grocery shopping anymore. I wasn't getting a period anymore. I had bruises all over my body. I was getting hot flashes. I like was so fatigued. Obviously all of my hormones and my glands were producing, you know, things the way that they should have been. Oh wow. Yeah. On top of not using the washroom, being constipated. My hair was falling out. Um like I really was kind of in that sense of doom because I knew I was so sick and nothing like nobody was helping me in terms of like medical community. They um, I went to the doctor and she told me that, you know, I was overweight and that I needed to exercise and eat more vegetables, you know, and I should take some like uh, rest relax you know to make me go use the washroom and I knew my body really well and thought well that's just going to make me more sick and then of course I tried and that did make me just my stomach hurt that much more so you lose that sense of um safety and faith in your um medical doctor sometimes too because you know intuitively that there's something not right but you're not getting that kind of confirmation I guess yeah. so that's when I started to get into um I went to a natural path and finally ended up doing a test and they did a food allergy test and gluten came up like to the extreme and so that was able uh to help me like feel in my mind okay yes there's actually something wrong with you instead of people you know kind of telling you it's just in your head right you're just overweight so yeah that was like a good starting point for me to start getting like some help in terms of okay I just need to change you know take gluten out of my diet versus yeah. versus other things so I have to ask growing up did you think or know there was a problem or did you just like think that was just that was just you that was just how things were um a big thing was stress like because uh, I didn't really have that support system of somebody saying like I guess, you know, trying to help me dig a bit more into like, what could be the problem. I felt like a lot of times it was just judgment, like, yeah. oh, like you're, you know, you're emotionally eating or you're just not exercising enough where for me, that was frustrating because I felt like I was, I was exercising a lot, and not getting anywhere. Yeah. Right. Just really kind of started to feel really uh, crappy about myself, basically, because I'm doing all this work and I'm not losing any weight or like nothing's getting better so yeah I kind of I just kind of felt like I didn't have uh emotional support to help me figure figure that out so intuitively I just felt like I'm stressed and I'm depressed right so and then I just always associated it with stress and I'm thinking finally like this can't be stress like this is like way more than stress yeah a little more a little more to it yeah. than that yeah i think that's just part of kind of like just people not talking about their problems yeah and so i just felt isolated in my in my situation and just kind of i think let it get worse and worse before i got sick sicker and sicker and finally realized okay now i'm really sick you know, it's really interesting because I was uh, 25 when I started to go through my health transformation, and mental trans transformation, everything that went along with that. Um, and throughout my life, I, I sort of didn't know what it felt like to be healthy and to feel good. It just became like the normal to have digestive problems and, uh, of course, all the other physical problems problems that I had along with it, such as uh, autoimmune reactions like rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, right. um, indigestion, gas, um, just pain and headaches, brain fog, fatigue, uh, among, you know, the insulin sensitivity and type two diabetes. And even like the, the mental health problems, that, which is like totally hundred percent connected to it as well. Like my depression, and uh, anxiety 
and stuff and i didn't realize how sick i actually was until i until i got out of it and it's my friend made a you know he made a comparison once and he's like you don't know you don't really know what it's like to be with the feeling of normal is what it's like to be in a normal relationship or in a normal state of life or mind until you're out of a out of that abusive relationship and whether that abusive relationship is with uh your lifestyle or with the person you know yeah so of course that ties into relationships because you know if you're not getting if people aren't listening to you at home right when you're just when you're young about like what you want to eat and then listening to that like you're like no you're going to eat this today because that's what we can afford <laughs> you know that's a, almost like the starting point of you're not feeling as a child heard about your needs and then also that the person's not asking you either like what you want right so you're kind of being told that it's not about you you know it's about your budget or it's about you know whatever's being cooked <laughs> So I, I think that's been a big, you know, change for me is just like speaking up, hey, no, this isn't what I want for dinner, or this is what I'm having for dinner. I don't, it's not, you know, you can eat what you want to eat, and I'm going to eat what I want to eat, because this is what my body needs, right? Mm. And that's, you know, years of having to work through verbalizing, this is what I'm eating, and you can eat what you want to eat. <laughs> You started to find your voice and put it into use and kind of essentially take your power back. Right. But it relates to intimate relationships, you know, partnerships, friendships, things like yeah. that. You kind of start to sort through who really matters to you when they're supportive of your needs, whether it is food or um, exercise, right? Maybe you're the type of person that needs to run every single day and, you know, somebody else does, is your, you know, partner and they don't run. Well, you kind of have to just listen to what your physical body needs and, and do it on your own and not wait for, you know, somebody else to support you, I guess. So I've kind of learned that, yes, I need support, but I also need to be independent, make my own choices and uh, not wait for other people to approve of, you know, my choices, I guess. So it's hard. Yeah. So um, you went to the naturopath, you found out that you had this gluten sensitivity and then what did you do to transform your life from then on? Cause it sounds like you did a little bit more than just change your diet. Yeah. So now I'm like promoting body, mind and spirit to people. Like I'm going to finish my yoga teacher training in May, which I'm really excited about because I know how important it is to connect like the physical, you know, and emotional, the breath, all of that stuff. So yeah, I was about 25 when I was so sick that I couldn't function. And I basically I prayed that either God would take this away from me or I would be shown like how to take it away. And then literally the next day my mom called me and said, you know, there's a lady at work that has celiac disease and here are all the symptoms. And in case, you know, this is what it is. And I said, honestly, I have every single symptom on that list. So that's when she actually paid for me to get the test done with the natural path, which was nice because she said, no, like, I want you to, you know, I want you to know. And I did. And um, from there, as I just changed my diet, literally, like, just took that out of my diet. I just couldn't believe how much better I felt. All my brain fog went away. Um, like I went from feeling like a two out of 10 to probably like a nine out of 10, like easily. And so I'm like, okay you know, energy wise, just intuitive wise, everything went up and started doing my Reiki training, which was really great because um, through that I started learning more about cleansing of the system and like, you know, letting go of some of that emotional stuff that I was carrying and kind of felt like I had a tool to, um, you know, deal with things versus, I guess, choosing poor habits, right? Like yeah. Self-sabotage. Yeah. So like a tool to get like become more intuitive and also to kind of get to the root of things <laughs> <laughs> literally yeah so yeah so then i started doing my reiki training like shortly after that and um just was so much more aware of my body and so much more aware of emotions and started helping other people kind of with their emotional stuff and i think as i was helping other people 
and helping myself. Then I started to develop, again, just more tools. So I started taking my reflexology course and uh, my teacher worked for maybe five minutes on my foot as a representation of my stomach through my digestive. And that was the first time that I actually felt like my stomach was the way it was way back when I was a child. Like, you know, when I felt like a, I had a stomach again, because my stomach was always so bloated and sore that I didn't know what it felt like to feel like normal. Yeah. When she worked on my stomach, I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. And that was for five minutes. So then I started to realize, oh, there are all these natural remedies out there to help people with digestive issues and stuff like that. So now I'm helping people with their digestive issues and their blood pressure. And like you said, diabetes and just lowering their stress levels because I'm realizing that stress has a lot to do with with digestion and and that it's not just what you put in your body it's um how you're processing your life and to slow down and chew and to breathe and yeah to break down your food and the yoga has been helping me tremendously that's another thing that i've been able to do through exercise that's the only thing that brought my stomach back down to like um not feeling so bloated as well exercise wise was just through breath and relaxation at the same time, I was able to take my stomach down like tremendously. So for me, weight loss wasn't about, you know, going and running. It was actually breathing, relaxing, and, you know, stretching at the same time. And like, you know, letting go of everything while moving my body. So yeah, yeah. you started digesting your, your emotions more efficiently, just as you started digesting your food more efficiently. Right. So that's really been a big thing for me lately is breathing and um, showing gratitude before I eat as well. So just like saying a little, you know, kind of like somebody would say grace. I'm just like, you know, saying I'm grateful for my food and really just taking my time and appreciating my food as I eat it. So I'm more aware of not just the food that I'm eating, but how I'm how I'm sitting with my food if I don't, if I just eat something, like you said, convenience wise, then I feel like it's just going in. It's not like going through, you know, the process. That's a, that's a really good point right there. Um, it's so important to just be able to sit with our food and uh, not only connect with it, but also just to not eat in a stressed out state and we're all on the rush and on the go. Because if, if we're eating in a stressed out state, which I'm actually going to do a video about this, but um, when we're eating in a, a stressed out state and all, in a rush or on the go, we're not going to be able to di- digest our food properly uh, and it can cause damage. And you also won't be able to extract the nutrients as well, because I mean, we're essentially in fight or flight and we're going to be focused on, or our cells are going to be focused on running from the tiger and they're not going to be focused as much on digesting the food. because That's the last thing that your cells are thinking about. Your cells just want to essentially, you know, run from the tiger. So it's really important to sit down, breathe, uh, be mindful of what you're eating. And even like, um, aside from being calm when you're eating to digest better, uh, just a little bit off topic, but it's just as important to understand and be mindful where your food comes from and not eat so mindlessly because I know myself in the past, like I would eat anything and you would not think twice about where it came from who made it, what the animals went through or the farmers went through or the, or the crops that were grown at all. You just don't think any of that. And I think it's so important to recognize where it came from. Cause I mean, if you're, when you get, um, if so, let's say your grandma makes you dinner with the carrots she grew in her garden, well, you're going to, there's a reason why those carrots are better. And part of that is the, uh, the connection that we have to them and, the understanding that okay grandma grew these in her garden she made them for us this is is awesome i'm super grateful and that makes it that much more easier to digest your food yeah absolutely and and going back into finances too about growing up like not being allowed to waste anything like i've really struggled with that because you know we become a garbage can like you said you just put things into your body because oh my god i don't want to waste this like we we paid money for this you know, and it's like throwing something in the garbage. There are, you know, people that are starving 
in our own community that would really appreciate that food. So if you throw that out, like you're not grateful, right? So I had to work through a lot of like letting go when I'm full, I'm full, you know, and that you don't need to keep eating because it's, it's um, impolite, right? A lot of culture around food too. Like it's literally, I'll have people that are like mad at you if you don't eat, <laughs> you know, eat your food because it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing, I guess, to, you know, just nibble at your food, right? Yeah, I know. We, we do, we do live in a culture where it's very common for parents to tell their kids to like, oh, eat everything on your plate. You have to eat everything on your plate. But when in fact, like, that's actually not really the best thing to do because we, we overconsume, and, uh, and then that carries forward. If we go to someone's house, like we might not want to eat everything that's on the plate, but we do anyway, just to sort of be polite. But uh, in reality, if we understood the the big picture of things, uh, it'd be a lot better on our health and our, our relationship with food. So I guess it's like eating for your body type is another thing that I know a lot of people are learning more about your blood type. Um, so you can actually get like a test to find out you know what foods you really should be avoiding and things like that so I'm all about like finding out again what's best for your body and because you know we grew up with Canada's food guide and it's like so needs to be modified for Canada's food guide for each individual (laughs) kind of thing because if we're setting that standard as a general thing it's very generalized and it's kind of teaching us that you know oh you should eat so many grains or you know so many vegetables or so so much fruit whereas maybe like you said some people are getting too much sugar or too much wheat whereas other people um have the opposite problem where they're actually not getting enough food in the run of the day yeah that's true as as a result it's causing a lot of like fatigue and when you're fatigued you tend to crave things that are more sugary so even though it's not healthy to eat um junk or things like that I've been learning that you know if I'm a little bit tired it's okay to eat something that you know for fuel for energy that my body needs but after that just kind of sit with it and it's okay and you know don't be hard on yourself that you honored where your body is but then when I'm healthy when I'm not tired I'm craving all this healthy food so it's just to kind of regenerate your system and get back into the you know get back to where you need to be and not to regret yesterday, I guess. Yeah, ex- exactly. And it's uh, it's okay to have treats. Uh, you know, you, you can have treats that are just healthier versions of them. You know, you don't have to go and get uh, a Mars bar. You can literally just get um, just uh, a chocolate bar with healthier ingredients, which there, there's more and more of them existing today as we uncover more knowledge and awareness of the, the importance of our ingredients. Totally. Yeah. So it's like you said, the, um, where we're getting our, our sources from, like, I you know that you're about supporting local and things like that. So it's kind of one of those things where we have to make local things affordable for people. Right. So, because some people can't afford like the, the price that local people have to put you know, vegetables up and things like that so they can survive. So it, it's kind of like just, I guess, supporting local, but making sure that you're staying in your in your budget with things like prioritizing because there might be someone that's buying a case of beer and a pack of cigarettes and they say, oh, I don't, I can't afford healthy food, right? So it's about how we're prioritizing. It's It's finding balance with supporting local, And just like making sure that we can still feed like, you know, our community too and that sort of thing. So yeah, but it's definitely difficult right now to, you know, to resource locally too. Yeah, that's another important point too. And I guess like during these times, people are going to start growing their own food a lot more as we realize the importance just in case there's a food shortages and like not even food shortages, but just our or the trade with other countries, you know, we're not going to be getting as much shipped in. So it's important to just start to, you know, try to go local or grow your own food or do what you can. And I also just want to touch a little bit on, back on, you are saying eating is so individualized. I mean, I learned a lot, <laughs> a lot about that on my own journey because I went through 
eating like every diet. I, I was vegan. I was vegetarian. I was keto. I was carnivore. I was everything. And then, of course, back in the day, I I ate literally everything, like all the time, like whatever I wanted, like whether it was crap or not. And uh, one thing that I learned that's really important is that each person is ind- individual. And what works for somebody is not going to work for somebody else. So if somebody is thriving on a vegan diet, you know, that is working for them. If somebody is working or is thriving on a, like a, keto diet or carnivore diet that is working for them but it might not necessarily work for you and another important point to add to that is uh it might be working for them for a certain period of time and then there it might come time to to change how you eat and uh, through my own experience i found it is best to just actually i eat intuitively so i listen to my body and my i've learned to uh, listen to my real cravings and listen to what I actually need versus um, the addiction of our dopamine response through uh, the sugary and starchy foods, which I, I overcame. And once I overcame that, it became a lot easier to eat intuitively and discover what's right for me. So maybe I'll go through times where I eat a little bit more vegetables and times when I uh, become fat adapted and, uh, eat a keto style diet but uh i don't think one thing is good to do for a really long time especially if it's restrictive because you know we don't want to do anything restrictive for a long period of time and i like to also uh compare that to working out and exercise programs because i mean if you think about it if you're doing uh bicep curls or doing the same exercise regime all the time well it's number one going to get boring and you're just going to be, you're just going to be focused on that one aspect. So you're going to develop these, like these big biceps. And then all of a sudden when it comes time to use your other muscles, they're not going to be as strong. And uh, there's a lot of uh, professionals talking more about metabolic flexibility and the importance of eating a variety in our diet and how that is actually the, the true optimum health. End of my rant on that, but uh, Robin, I just wanted to ask you. <laughs> obviously, uh, <laughs> it triggers things for me when you say some of that stuff. It like, does, yeah. Yeah, like a uh, a big thing that I've struggled with because we're kind of talking about struggles, right? Is um, being very inconsistent. So one thing that is my positive is variety. I'm all about change all the time, which is so healthy, right? With your exercise, with your food and, you know, people even, how people affect you. But so variety is great, but then the inconsistency is what can really, you know, ruin your body too, like to, to not have a little bit of like a, a routine in your day, you know, like the same sleep the same uh time you eat things like that because that's kind of where it's like you know it's great to have variety but if you don't have a little bit of a consistency in your routine that your body doesn't isn't familiar with that right so that's going to make a huge impact in in what it knows because your body only knows what you show it right so it's saying oh like i'm not used to eating at this time so yeah Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You, you become adapted to the different rhythms that we do as well. I mean, and what I described, what I do is going to be entirely different for somebody else, but consistency is a uh, very important as well. But um, what I guess the main thing I was referring to was um, if you more so for the extreme diets, like veganism, and uh keto now i do a lot of research and a lot of reading because i I just love to learn and else the random experience i do know that through a long period of time of doing a restrictive diet from that it can lead to problems so um but you can also develop a consistency and changing with the seasons now for some people it's actually better for them to just eat a variety all the time consistently no, everybody is entirely, entirely different. And then I also want to add that some people's bodies can be vegan forever. Some people's bodies can be keto or carnivore forever. So this is what I'm getting at. And I really want to, one of the things I, I, my goals and visions I want to do as I 
develop this platform, Best Interest, is really teach people and give them a sense of freedom and empowerment that you don't have to do what everybody else does. Like, listen to your intuition, go through your own uh, learning and research. And just like Robin and I did, we went through naturopath and figured out what was, what was uh, going on with us <clears throat> or whatever health professional you choose. And then we began to implement those changes. And then, well, for Robin, it worked for her. And for, for me, it worked for me. So you got to find out what works for you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple other things is like Ayurveda or like Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever done that? Like uh, I actually kind of funny. I, I intuitively kind of do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of, so like, there are three doshas, right? Do you know your doshas? I, I'm not entirely familiar with the doshas. And that's where it's like, we have, there are so many fads out there, like you're saying, right? And you just have to listen to what your body um, says, but it's typical of people with more pale skin or people with like red hair to be more like a fire energy, right? So it's like, if they're, especially when we're working with children, if they're run on the fire side, they're more warm. So when you give them like warm potatoes or something like that, or something really spicy, they might be reacting to the heat. And what they need is actually like more, like a cold vegetable to actually balance their energy. Yeah. And that's where a lot of parents, like, you know, they're not, they might not be familiar with their child's energy or their own energy so it's I find like when you know if you're running on the hot side that you need something cooling or you know but as you were saying like with fresh veggies and stuff like where you need a warm soup sometimes I think we get these cravings like oh I could really go for some like a warm soup versus like a cold salad and we logically think oh a, a cold salad's on my diet plan right? Like I went to a nutritionist and they told me like on Tuesday, I have to eat a salad. <laughs> so it's hard because they think like, oh, this is healthy, but it might not be what your energy needs, which is at that time, if you're going through um, something emotionally, that there might be uh, energetically something you need to, to balance that, right? So. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. I do know a little bit about Ayurveda and uh, I just remembered, I actually did research my doshas and uh, I ended up I think I had a little bit of each dosha just through my own energy. I forget what, how you even determine what your doshas are, but I, I know I had a little bit of each. And uh, I think that explains why I am so prone to change, <laughs> like to yeah. changing, changing what I eat all the time on like a regular basis. But that's, you know, I'm, I'm unique just as we all are. So. Right. So yeah, you're, if you're feeding children, children something and expecting every single child to eat the same thing I know growing up it was like I wanted to be a vegetarian because I was weird about meat and you know that was something that I felt and my mom said we can't afford being like we can't afford you being a vegetarian so you're gonna basically not in this way but you know you're gonna eat meat because I'm not cooking a separate meal for everybody right but that's the balance with parents too it's like are you really going to, you know, make everybody a separate meal? And how do you find that happy balance with listening to your children and, uh, um, you know, like not taking a million hours? Because I think most people struggle with food, food addictions and things like that because they're bored. And also that it's really time consuming to prepare healthy meals, especially for like multiple children and everybody's needs, right? So... So did you find that you, your digestive system got a lot better? Can you eat some of the foods that you weren't able to eat before? Um, absolutely. Yeah. So, and so herbs are something that I've been really dabbling in and I'm then like growing my own herbs and I'm doing a veggie garden this summer and I'm like so excited into like um, plant therapies and aloe and aloe can really help with hormones like women who are, you know, midway at that point. There's so many different types of things. So for me, it's more about, I'm personally, I'm all about a plant-based diet, like anything that comes from the ground. Yeah. Because I just feel like uh, when you're craving something like red meat, your body is probably telling you that. And that's up to you where you get your source, like your, if it's locally sourced or grass fed or whatever, it's just, 
I kind of look at red meat as like when your body's telling you that you need red meat, you just know, right? When you're deficient of something and that's where you have to work to get to that point. But if your body's craving fish too, like you're just like, I just know I need fish. So I think if you can get to that point where you just know, like for the most part, eating a plant-based diet and then you can just start craving, okay, I need fish today or I need you know, red meat today, because I'm starting to feel that way. You never want to get to the point where you like haven't listened to that. And now you have become deficient in some type of, you know, like iron or, or, you know, any of those good oils and stuff like that. There's so many, so many things out there that we can do daily that have no harmful effects on us. I think like plants and stuff like there's nothing negative that can hurt you unless you're overdosing and in herbs or something. Yeah, exactly so it's, if you know something's good for you just like over i'd say like overdo the, the the good stuff because you're probably lacking it if your body's allowing you to eat that much of it like you can't go wrong with eating a million pieces of spinach yeah exactly that's a that's a really good point and it's so so accurate and if you do eat a lot of the good stuff too it's generally lower in like uh well a lot of calories and all that stuff so you don't really have to worry about it too much and you can't really absorb too much nutrients because your your body uses them effectively and, and stores them and and whatnot or if you don't need any you just literally just pee it out so <laughs> and water the key thing is like you know when people actually like learn and study about nutrition then they start to learn there's a lot of math to nutrition, right? And science and all that stuff. And so most people need to go to someone to help them with it. And that's, there's no shame in, you know, getting, needing help, just like a financial advisor or something, right? Like people think that they need to know their own, like, you know, you go to people to get, to help you more with, with nutrition and stuff. Like a lot of people are just learning that it's okay to, you know, get help from someone that knows more because they actually studied it. Like that, you know, with fiber and stuff that you have to drink so much water with fiber so you can actually break down your fiber so you can digest it. Some people might eat like a pile of shredded meats and then not have any water with it. And then they end up, you know, suffering and thinking, oh, you know, shredded wheat's bad. <laughs> Where it's like, mm-hmm. no didn't know that water you need to drink like two glasses of water when you eat your cereal so that that's actually becomes effective Does that makes sense yeah that totally makes sense um i forget where i was gonna go with that but i was gonna say that since i'm talking to you um when i lost a lot of weight i mean if anybody doesn't know i lost like probably a total of 115 pounds wow but uh yeah, so I lost a lot of weight and cured a lot of health problems in the meantime. So I did my own, a lot of my own research to figure out my own things. I did go to naturopaths and stuff too, um, and which really, really helped a lot. And they helped actually affirm what I was already doing intuitively for my body, which is actually what I was going to get at. So it's it's a really good idea to go, go to somebody who is an expert, a professional, whether you choose um your doctor who refers you to a nutritionist or dietitian or uh if you choose to go to a naturopath or if you choose to contact somebody like me who has been through the process of transforming um my body and my health and who has done all the research you know i can help you whatever you choose just go do it but the thing that i wanted to mention was when i lose when i when i lose when i lost a lot of weight um i also dealt with a lot of emotional trauma, a lot of emotional issues, and a lot of crap that I didn't deal with in the past. And it was interesting how as I could, as I let go of what I was, what energy and what emotions I was storing within me, uh, I lost more and more weight and became healthier and healthier. Now, coincidence or not, I personally think that is totally connected, especially as a massage therapist, you, you know, people come in because their back hurts uh because they're carrying stress well they're literally are carrying the stress in their muscles because let me tell you when people come in and they're on vacation and their stress has lessened their back is a lot better and i think that carries along with their with their health problems as well and uh there's this people say that our fat is a a way of carrying our our emotions like we're just literally just carrying excess emotions that have yet to be released and it's a way of like 
we form like this protective barrier around us. And I don't know if this relates to everybody, but for me, I can totally resonate with that because it's exactly what it was in my case. So just some two, two cents to think about there. For me, it's just like what I really struggled with is like moving forward from, from issues, like coming out of it. I, I still struggle, right? And, you know, working through things every single day. I think we all are. Oh, but yeah. what I really struggle with are people who judge people like that are struggling, whether it's mental illness or being overweight, because if we can't support each other, you know, like through um, encouragement and things like that, as I was saying, you know, when I was kind of being told, hey, you know, you could lose a few pounds. My natural reaction was, you know, to rebel, right? Like now I'm great. Now I'm going to go and eat more. <laughs> it's how we take things. So I think it's, we have to be so careful with people when they're going through those difficult times, how to uh, like to understand the emotions of how to help someone that's struggling with weight and um, who's struggling with, you know, just emotional stuff in general, because anyone that has emotional stuff is carrying, um, the, being underweight is just as bad as being overweight. You know, that's, oh. thing. we kind of talked about that a little bit. Because, exactly, yeah that over obsession with working out and things anorexia and bulimia and you know all that stuff so I feel like it's the way that we approach things like we're coming into a completely different time where how do we address hey you know I think you need to exercise or eat healthier or hey do you think you need to eat more you know like are you eating I think we kind of just judge and kind of, we don't, we have a really hard time sometimes with supporting people because it's such a touchy subject. And it don't, yeah. like this thing that we suppress, we either say it too directly or we suppress it. So yeah, it's just having like a really good support system with people who love you and people that you trust. And if you love people and you trust them, then you have to just kind of like, you know, know that they're coming from a good space, whether it is. Uh, whether you're feeling attacked or, um, you know, the, if they love you and you trust them, chances are they mean well. And that's where uh, the person that's struggling has to also try their best to take it in the most positive way, right? And, and filter out the people that are judgmental and negative. Yeah, I, I totally agree with all that as well. Um, what advice would you give to somebody who feels stuck right now, whether they're struggling with, uh, you know, digestive health, health problems or just any health problem in general? For me, I'd say instead of backing away from the people that are going through things, I think that do the opposite. Don't back away from people that are going through that because you might feel uncomfortable about it yourself. I would say go into helping the person, but do it in a way that's very gentle in terms of maybe – um, obviously we can't hug people right now, but <laughs> if you live with someone that's going through it, offer them maybe a touch on the back or hold their hand or just send them some kind of support through love and keep in mind that words are powerful, but what you don't say is more powerful. So just sending somebody like, you know, good energy or just, again, that, that, that comfort to them because the reason why people are struggling is probably because they're lacking attention, they're lacking comfort, they're lacking love, and all they're looking for is love, right? That's all people need and that's all people want. That's what I would say. Exactly. It's the bottom line to everything. There, you know, the reason why I created this uh, platform, Best Interest, is to, to leave an open door for people who feel exactly like this and who, who don't really know what to do you know if, if they don't want to reach out which you're more than, more than welcome I, I encourage you to reach out to me if you want to just talk or you want advice or even if you just want to vent like just I'm here but I also just created this so that you can you can have um, a place to at least a, a resource to you can just listen to without ever even connecting with me and uh, there's also lots of other people who do stuff like this and that that really helped me 
going through my transformation is finding these different, uh, these people who help with various issues, whether it's health or fitness or, or spiritual uh, fitness or health in, as well. Awesome. Yeah, right. Robin's one of those people too. <laughs> you help people. Oh, thanks. Ditto. Yeah, I know. I love, I love your like new platform. I think it's wonderful. It's just your last name too. It's just kind of creative. But. <laughs> No, I was pretty intrigued because I've been with you through your, not so much personally, but I've witnessed your transformation, which is pretty amazing to see like somebody change. And it's not so much the time frame because I think we get caught up in, I want to lose weight by this time. I think because I saw how much you've grown spiritually and emotionally that your physical just transformed naturally. Yes, you were doing the work. But if you weren't doing the other types of work, it wouldn't have come off as quickly. So I feel like I'm happy for you that you did it in a healthy way. And uh, yeah, I'm proud to be your friend. Yeah, exactly. It was literally just it comes down to a decision and a lifestyle choice. And it's all in the power of your mindset. I'm actually about to release a video, I think today on that whole subject. But yeah, really, it comes down to enjoying the journey, enjoying the process. Like life's going to have ups and downs. You know, there's no such thing as perfect, but we can be perfectly happy with how we are. <laughs> yeah. And, and honestly, through like meditation and, you know, adding little things into your exercise and your diet, like that mental health piece is so powerful. As we said, just um, tell yourself like yesterday's gone, right? Tomorrow's tomorrow. And right now I'm, I'm beautiful or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And start to cultivate different tools uh, through whether it's through finding mentors or through science or different spiritual belief systems, like just find something that gives you a tool to, that gives you strength to put action into changing your life so that you can just be happier <laughs> and experience more love. Like you said, that's all we are looking for. Yeah. thank you um anyway thank you so much for talking to me today robin now is there anything else you want to add to this conversation before we wrap it up no no i think the key thing with like anything to do for me anything to do with weight loss is about comfort you know like i think we uh even under being underweight too it's just we're we are looking for comfort, you know, like we're using um, exercise as a form of comfort sometimes or food. And so I think it's about um, just being okay with, aside from being okay with you, like just feeling comfortable about your choices, right? Like feeling confident in the choices that you make. And sometimes we let other people throw us off our path, right? And so just staying strong in your choices, that's what I would recommend. I agree. Uh, I will ask you one question, though. What inspires you in life? What, what, do you, what would you say the main thing that keeps you going, that inspires you, makes you feel like you have a purpose? Um, for me, my spiritual has really helped me, as I said, when I went through my difficult times. Like, I prayed because I had to, you know? Like, it kind of felt like, okay, you hit rock bottom, time to pray. <laughs> so that's something that I, I'm grateful for that I hit rock bottom because if I didn't, I wouldn't have found faith. So for me, um, faith kind of inspires me every single day. Like I always make a point to, you know, do my journaling and just kind of connect with, okay, what do I need today? And try to live every day to the fullest and in the moment as much as I can. So yeah, so faith helps me and just feeling like I'm always doing what I'm supposed to do on my path and checking in that way. Hey, that's good. It sounds like it's working for you. I shouldn't say it. It definitely is. Anyway, I'm going to link in the show notes uh, in the description to all your websites. If anybody wants to find out what you're doing, I know you host different workshops and stuff. And uh, so I'll, yeah, I'll include a link to your website and your different Facebook pages. Do you have any workshops coming up at all that you could tell the listeners? Or? Um, I'm doing a Reiki level one on Tuesday coming up. Um, and that's a hundred dollars. So that's an opportunity as I was saying, like Reiki helped me a lot, mainly just be able to connect back into my body a bit more. And it allowed me to help me a bit more with my emotional 
of things that I was experiencing in kind of in a different way in a spiritual sense. Um, and aside from that, I do lives every day on Facebook. I do uh, daily readings on YouTube, Robin Sealing, and I'm just starting to do uh, daily videos on Instagram as well. So it's basically whoever pops on, I just kind of connect to uh, little tidbits in terms of how maybe they could help themselves go body, mind, spirit. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rob, and hope you have a beautiful day.